morning everyone welcome to a default route video today uh, we're going to be discussing uh, first hot redundancy protocols and this is the first in the series we're going to be covering HSRP which is the Cisco proprietary um, first hot redundancy protocol this is the topology for today we're going to be covering um, HSRP between these two routers here R2 and R3 uh, from the viewpoint of R1 which is going to access our client and uh, R1 is going to be trying to talk to R4 so we're going to configure HSRP on this link here and this is using the common subnet 192.168.1.0/24 so R2 and R3 are a, a dot 2 and dot 3 respectively we're going to configure HSRP to use 192.168.1.1 share that IP address between both of these guys so when R1 um, is trying to get out to R4 its default gateway will be 192.168.1.1 which is the HSRP shared address of those two those two routers there let me just have a quick, uh, quick check. Everyone's okay. You all, you all good? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Should we, uh, should we get started then? Um, let's go and have a look on router two. So router two, we're going to make router two our primary uh, HSRP node today. So this one's going to be the one that kind of picks up service first off. Go into configuration mode. The way you do HSRP is all interface uh, specific. So yeah, it's all inter you have to go into the interface first to be able to access the commands. And the HSRP commands in, in uh, Cisco IOS use the uh, the keyword standby. So after standby, uh, you then use a uh, common group number between all your HSRP um, uh, clients. So I guess um, R R2s we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna create group number one, and R3 is gonna join uh, group number group number one as well. So all of your all of your nodes within the common within the common group use the same number. So standby group one, uh, and then it's as simple as the keyword IP and then giving it the sheet the shared IP number so we chose 192.168.1.1 as our shared IP and once that's in um, I'll tell you what we'll do we'll do a debug uh, standby just basic so we can watch the uh, conversation going on there we go so HSRP is coming on interface up uh, it's now sending out some some chat traffic just to see if anybody else out there is is getting group one um, it's going to wait to see if it gets any responses. If it gets no responses, then um, router two will will just come up as the primary primary HSRP node, uh, which it's doing right now. So it's going from speak to standby. It's just waiting, and then it's going to stand by to active. So router two is now active node for HSRP group one on the IP address 192.168.1.1. If we go to R1, which if you remember was the client over here, um, and we go onto uh, that router there. And we just do we didn't need to do that. We just do a quick ping of 192.168.1.1. We see that's up. Let's just have a look at our art table. We see uh, we've got three nodes here that we're interested in. Our two's IP address is is there with the MAC address CC 0149C5 la la. And we've got three which is uh, CC 0349C5 la la. la. And we've got 192.168.1.1, which has the MAC address 0000.0c07.ac01. And what's clever about this is uh, that's a common MAC address shared by HSRP. It's a HSRP registered MAC address, I guess you would call it. The last two, the last two digits there, the 01, that is the group number. So the HSRP group number. If you remember, we configured group number one, and um, we can see here that 01 is the is the group number representing the MAC address. If we go back in here, just to prove this out, let's get rid of let's get rid of group one and put in a, a new uh, standby uh, three uh, IP 192.168.1.1. Let's put that in. Let's wait for HSRP to uh, sort itself out. So it's just going through the, the the chat phase now, just sending out hello to see if anybody else has got the group or if anybody else is the active node and. It's going to take over. It's gone from standby to active. So now router two is uh, active for group three. Let's have a look at. Uh, let's do a ping. Refresh the art table. And now when we look at the art table for 1.1, we see AC03. So the group we created was three, and the MAC address uh, is also is also three. Outrageous, and I will repeal it. Absolutely, my friend. Well, um, that's. That's that. So, so we've got R2 configured now with HSRP, and um, we need to configure its partner over here, uh, R3. So let's get onto R3. Again, configuration mode. Go into the interface, 
and the sta standby keyword enables HSRP. Remember, we chose group three now. So standby three, IP 192.168.11. Now, the big no-no normally would be uh, sharing IP addresses on the common subnet. You don't have two devices with the same IP on the same subnet, right? Because then you're going to get IP conflicts. But with HSRP, what it does is it sends out hello packets. So what we should start seeing soon is root of three. In fact, there it is. Root of three sending out hello packets saying, hi, I'm root of three and I'm running HSRP and how are you and all that sort of, thing, sort of stuff. So the, between the pair of them now, they'll be talking. So there's root of three speaking. Um, and root of three speaking again. Root of three speaking again. So that's the third time. So it should agree to not agree now. So yeah, there we go. So the fourth one that came through there was root, um, root of three is now being told it's a standby node. Let's do uh, show uh, standby. We can see that there are, this is the configuration for root of two. We see there have been two state changes. That's probably when we um, took took standby down, brought it back, and then re and then brought group root three in. We see that uh, we're we're locally active. Um, that's us, and that the standby router is uh, 1.3 and its priority is 100. So we brought router three in, and it didn't take over service from from router two. And the reason for that is um, the default priority of HSRP is 100, and uh, both both router 2 and router 3 have, have got priority of 100. So that's my local priority and that's the priority of router 3. The, the one with the highest priority wins uh, the election. So if this was the first time these guys were talking and one of them had a higher priority, um, it would win. And um, So what we're going to do now, we're going to configure R3 with a higher priority so that it can beat R2 in the election. The way you do that is stand by, give it the group, give it a priority keyword and then you give it a number and this is anywhere between 0 and 255 so we're going to give it a priority of 110 so that's 10 more than router 2 which is priority 100 let's uh, let's turn debugging back on uh, debug standby and uh, let's sit back and see what happens here with this new priority so you can see router 3 is now saying hellos uh, priority 110 uh, against uh, router 2 is priority 100 it's still standby Nothing's changing. Everything is staying exactly the same. The reason for that is because we haven't configured something called preemption. The preemption is is a way of telling the router to pick up service when it can. Okay, so as soon as the opportunity arrives, rise and you are uh, a stronger candidate, then you take service over. So let's configure R3 with preemption now, and watch what happens. So standby three, preempt. That's the keyword. We've hit that. So now Route 3 will start advertising out its stronger 110 priority preference. It will take over service from Route 2. You can see this happening now. So Route 2 is now standby, Route 3 is active. You see the state going from there, speak to standby. Let's have a quick look at that, just make sure that's true. Show uh, standby, standby. Let's have a look now. Active router is local, that is me. Standby router is now Route 2 with the priority of 100, and my local priority was 110. So there you go. So you can figure the higher priority. You configure the preemption and then you pick up the service. Without preemption, you don't pick up the service. So that's uh, that's that. Let me think now. What else can we do? What about interface tracking? So one of the one of the key things with HSRP is being able to turn itself off and change its own preference depending on um, the state of the network. If you're R1 and you're talking to R3 now, which you are, um, R3 is the primary for the HSRP. If if this interface is lost on the inside of R3 uh, and it's no longer saying sending HSRP hellos, then R2 should pick that up, should notice that and take over service. So let's have a look at that. Let's do a shut on fast Ethernet 00. So you see now HSRP is state change from active to init. Because we took the interface down, it didn't send a I'm going down message to R2, it didn't have time, we just took it out. But what R2 will do now is it will be waiting for the hellos, it's listening for the hellos from R3. If it misses three in a row, R2 picks up the service and goes and goes active. If we do a show um, standby, now we see that uh, R2 is now local, it is now active, beg your pardon, uh, priority is 100. That's because uh, there is no R3 left to uh, to pick up the service. Let's do a no shut on that interface just to bring R3 back into service. Here comes the line. It's going from listen to active. 
let's just um, do it on all around there. Um, show standby. And now the active route is back to R3 with its priority 110. Remember, with the preempt on, and that's all good. So that's local local interface uh, failure. What about remote interface failure? Well, or or the wrong side of the HSRP group failing. If you're sending packets from R1 to R4 via R3, and this network interface here between R3 and switch one goes down, then um, you don't want the traffic to go to R3. There's no point because R3 can't send the traffic on. Um, so one way to to do that in HSRP is to do interface tracking. So what we'll do is we'll configure interface tracking on R3 to to watch for this interface. If anything happens to this interface, then it's going to decrement its HSRP priority to be cut to, so that R2's 100 priority um, now is higher than R3's. So R3, so so let let me cover that one more time. So R3's current priority is 110, and R2's current priority is 100. And remember, the one with the highest priority wins the election and becomes the HSRP master, right? So we're gonna we're gonna have to reduce the priority on R3 to enable R2 to take over. Now on the track command, you get given a um, a number to pop in there. So let's have a look at this. So let's go into interface first. In fact, that's the wrong node. Let me just do. so we're on R3. So this is the primary again. We do standby three track, and then we choose the interface. So we're gonna track the outside of this now. And then we get to decrement value. So one from one to two fifty five. So remember we're we're one hundred and ten, R two is one hundred, so we need to decrement by a minimum of eleven, which will take our preference down to ninety nine. So let's do that. So we're gonna decrement by eleven. We're gonna track that interface, decrement by eleven. Well, let's just put the debugging back on R two so we can see this. D debug standby. Let's watch this happen. So let's go into our fast Ethernet one zero and we'll shut that interface. So that's this interface here between on this line here, yeah. Let's see what's happened here now. So router three is now sending a priority of ninety nine. It's sending a ninety nine because it's decremented its its configured priority of one hundred and ten by eleven to take it to ninety nine. And now router two's got a priority of one hundred, but it's still not picking it up. And the reason for that is again we've not configured preemption, so router two will not pick this up. You know. Until we put this in, so let's do, let's do that now. So standby three preempt, and this should be pretty quick now. So there we go. So now it it, it knows that router three's priority is 99. It's less than its configured priority of 100. So now with the preempt statement on it, router two should now become the primary or the active node for the HSRP, and you can see that there. So router router two is now active. Let's just prove that out. Do you want debug all? Show uh, standby. Active router is local. Standby router is 1.3 with a priority of 99. So the decrements worked, the tracking's worked. That's all good. Uh, I'm just trying to think of anything, uh, any other basic uh, standby commands that we've missed. Let's have a quick gander in here. Oh, timers. So the the, def the default timers are. Um, if, if I remember rightly, three seconds. Uh, the hellos are sent every three seconds, and the dead is uh, at ten seconds. So it takes three timeouts for it to uh, fail over the service, and that might be too long for you. You might want to make it a bit quicker. So um, you can change the timers. Standby three timers. Um, the hello interval between one and two fifty-four seconds. Um, so we could say one second and uh, hold time uh, three. So it'll take three seconds to to go down basically. Let's um so let me uh just put this on the right interface. There we go. Uh into fast one zero, no shuts. Let's bring that one back up that we dropped before. Now this guy should uh should flip over, debug uh standby. Those hellos are coming in one second now. So it's, it's, it's already done it. We missed it. We were too we were too slow. Okay, so there were a few things we uh, we still have to cover off, like authentication. Um, but uh, for the basic HSRP, I guess that's it for today. So thank you very much for joining me, and see you next time.